Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio where I have a confession for you today. I love outhouses. Not actually using them in real life, though I have had that memorable experience once or twice. No, I'm talking about modeling outhouses for our model railroad layouts. I already have a few different varieties of outhouses or privies or lavatories here on the Thunder Mesa layout, but I'm always looking to add one or two more because in my personal observation, it is a severely undermodeled detail on 19th century and early 20th century layouts. You know, even in some areas here of the West and rural America, there was no indoor plumbing until you know, the middle of the 20th century, until the 1950s, so outhouses were literally everywhere. Now, these outhouses did come in a lot of different shapes and sizes and configurations, though the proverbial brick outhouse was probably extremely rare due to the fact that once the hole was filled, you usually just moved the shed to a new hole. And if you had a brick structure, eh, that would be kind of difficult to do. And there are a lot of different kits available to build your favorite outhouse uh, from all different manufacturers and all the usual model railroading scales. The one I'm going to be building today is O scale for my ON30 Thunder Mesa layout and comes from Wild West scale models. But there are ones out there from Bar Mills, Crescent Creek models, and many others. And I'll put some links down below for some kits you might want to put together yourself. But I should mention that an outhouse is also an excellent first scratch building project. If you want to get your feet wet, so to speak, in scratch building, you can't get much simpler than an outhouse. Four walls, a roof, and a door. Uh, this kit was actually a gift that was given to me by uh, a fellow member of the Carrollwood Pacific Historical Society, Mr. Steve Dessert, and I thank him very much for that. And uh, Steve, I'm finally getting around to building it. Let's open it up here. The instructions. Looks like some trim and the actual uh, toilet itself. Very important. Got some laser cut basswood. Looks like about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Yeah, all the walls. Got some doors. Yeah, about thirty-second of an inch thick um, plywood. Some milled trim pieces and some bar mills uh, paper shingles. Awesome. All right, this all looks uh, pretty simple and straightforward. Anybody should be able to put one of these together, I think. So, the first thing I want to do per the instructions, I want to, I want to stain these pieces before assembly. But before I stain these pieces, I want to distress the wood just a little bit uh, using a razor saw to add some extra wood grain. Just dragging it along the claps like so. And these, the grain is going vertically rather than horizontally. Let me show you a little trick sometimes. Um, with these kits, you'll get laser cut parts where it didn't quite cut all the way through. Just um, flip it over and uh, cut it on the back side. See, this is the laser. The laser hits it from this side. And what it does, it's little tiny pulses as it goes all the way around. And um, sometimes where the grains may be a little thicker or more robust, it won't cut all the way through, so you just need to uh, use your hobby knife to cut through those places, and then it just should fall right out of the sheet, just like that. One thing I just realized while cutting these out is that um, they give you the option to have a, one of the walls have a window or have them be solid all the way around. Uh, having a window on your outhouse is uh, pretty shishi, you know, it's pretty bougie. This stain has been sitting for a little while, so I just want to give it a quick stir. Looks pretty good. And again, this is some uh, shoe dye, some kiwi black shoe dye, some kiwi brown shoe dye mixed in, and uh, lots of isopropyl alcohol. You just need a few drops 
of the shoe dye for uh, a few ounces of alcohol. Test this on the scrap. Always a good idea to test your stains before putting them on your models. Yes, I think that'll work nicely. I just want to go with the grain on each piece. And I'm going to be staining these front and back to uh, minimize warping. Now this plywood is going to take the stain differently. It's a little slicker, a little bit different colors. You notice it's a gray color instead of the yellow of the basswood. The stain is basically just a, a base coat. And um, these pieces are going to be painted as well. That's how I like to simulate older paint jobs where the paint has faded and is maybe flaking off here and there. So you need that stain to show through underneath. I'm going to flip these over now. Now that they've started to dry and stain the back side. Now while the stain is drying on all those uh, wood pieces, go ahead and get a coat of primer on these laser board bits. I'm just going to leave them right on the backing sheet. I think I only need to paint one side, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. All right, I'm going to just use some gray uh, Tamiya surface primer on these. But I think I'm going to skip ahead to step three here and go ahead and put the, uh, the toilet seats together. Now I like this uh, tight bond wood glue for this kind of stuff, but honestly any PVA will do. Any PVA glue of Elmer's or Eileen's tacky glue, whatever you want to use. I'll dry fit these pieces first. Make sure everything goes the way it's supposed to. I'm just using a toothpick to get glue on all of the mating surfaces. Tabs and slots make this very, very easy. Very intuitive. And it goes like that. And then this bench comes on top. Now I can glue the seat on. They've designed it so it nicely covers up these uh, these tabs and slots, so you don't see those. And then the lid goes just like so, but I'm going to wait to put that in until uh, pretty much the whole structure is together. Because that's going to be a really fragile piece and it's just going to want to break off. I'm going to put the other one together now, and I suppose if you really wanted to make this realistic, you could drill a hole right there or just cut that out completely. So it would go straight down into... Um, the netherworld. All right, set the toilet seats aside to dry, which sounds funny when I say it out loud. <laughs> and uh, now I'm going to start working on the doors and windows. Pretty basic two-part assembly. You just glue them up back to back like so. Really important things like this where you're laminating one thing to another to make sure you get the glue <clears throat> all the way out to the edges. Make sure they are perfectly lined up. And we'll do this one. Always be checking yourself for glue fingers. Glue finger is the bane of every model builder. Go to pick up a delicate piece with a nice finish on it. You glue all over your hands. It's a pain. The struggle is real, my friends. kit comes with these uh, laser cut Z braces for the doors which is made out of the same uh, uh, laser board. You can improve the look of these by uh, just pressing down and lightly scribing in um, cut lines there. So it looks like three separate pieces of wood rather than just a one laser cut piece. Now I went ahead and painted the uh, the benches here with some uh, Rust-Oleum uh, light tan camo, which is does a pretty good job of simulating the color of the wood. But now I'm going to go back and paint the uh, the seats themselves, just the ring here, um, which is etched in with a laser. 
with some antique white. There we go. Now that makes that target easier to hit. Every little bit helps. I'm going to go ahead and start putting these windows together. I've got two different styles. So I'll mix it up and use one in one, uh, one outhouse and then the other one in the other. They've got an optional piece of trim that goes up here at the top. I like that, so I'm going to put it on. I can glue these uh, Z braces onto the doors now. Now the door trim gets built up the same way as the windows, which is this little separately applied header piece up at the top. Now I'm going to brush paint all of these trim pieces, and I think for one, I'm going to just use the same antique white that I used there. I'm just using some cheapo uh, craft paint here. This is some apple barrel antique white and do these corner trim pieces also and before this um, paint completely dries I'm going to take my hobby knife scrape some of it off down here near the bottom of the door frame so that stain shows through gives the look of old weather beaten paint using the uh, flat edge of the knife for this and not the point. For the trim on this other one I'm going to use a dark green. This is um, English Ivy. Same thing again, just brushing it on. Once again I'm going to scrape a little bit of that off the edge of my knife. Now I'm ready to paint the side walls for this uh, clapboard siding. I'm going to use some Apple Barrel Barn Red. And I'm not going to brush it on. I'm going to stipple it on with my stipple brush, which is a handy tool you may have seen me use before. Really great for getting an old weathered paint look. See, I'm not getting going for full coverage on here. Just a really quick and uh, simple way to get this, uh, this effect. Once again, I like to have it, uh, the effect be a little bit more pronounced down towards the bottom than uh, up at the top, because that's where most of the weathering tends to happen, where it's not protected by the overhang of the roof. That's probably pretty good right there. Then for places like the inside of the door and window frame, I will, you know, do a more traditional paint job with a brush. Now I'm going to do the same thing, same technique, same tools on these walls, except I'm using a color called the light mocha. So after this paint has had a chance to dry, I like to go back with a wire brush, just going along the grain, take off any high spots, kind of bring it all down a little bit. I'll just go ahead and go through and do this on each one of these walls until I get it the way I like it. I don't know if you can see that. I've cut this acetate into a strip, which is the same width as the window. And now I'm going to just apply a little bit of uh, this uh, Zap Canopy glue to the back. Less is more when it comes to glue on glazing windows. Now I can just press this down right on this strip up towards the top. And then when that glue sets up, I can just trim it right at the bottom at the base of the window. So it's just easier to handle with something small like this. The kit gives you these tiny little blocks out of the uh, laser board to act as door handles. 
And you can just glue those into the little etched rectangle on each side of the door, like so. The instructions recommend that you uh, finish these walls as much as you can in the flat before putting them all together, and that's a, uh, I think that's a good idea. That's a, a general modeling practice I tend to agree with. Now these windows fit right snugly inside the window opening. And we can lay this frame right over the top. Okay, I think we're ready to start putting these together. I'm going to start with this one first. Do uh, the rear and side walls and see if I can get a nice square corner here to work with the rest of the model. I'm going to model the door open on both of these. Can see the interior a little bit. You know, I've got some old graphics left over from other projects. I never throw any of this stuff away. When I'm done with a project, I always save. If there's any leftover signs or anything, I always save those. Now I can put them in here so that users of the uh, latrine can uh, edify themselves with uh, intellectual materials while they do their business. <laughs> now I can attach the other side wall. Now the front, I think. Make sure everything lines up properly. Glue the lid on here. I'm kind of leaning backwards. Now I think it's safe to put this whole thing together. This just fits down over the top of the floor. Just like that. Now we'll lay this down on its back so we can put this door frame on. Just line it up with the opening. Now I can just glue the door open right in the doorway. Now to trim these milled corner pieces to length, I'm just going to take a hard lead pencil and make a mark there. And another one here to match the pitch of the roof. Let me show you a little trick here. Put it on top of a piece of scale 12 by 12, and then just press down with the blade. That should match our corner just perfectly. And we'll put a matching piece over on this side. Kind of clamp that with my fingers until the glue sets up. Get the last piece of trim on, just like that. Now, before I put the roof on this, I'm going to go ahead and put the other one together too, in exactly the same way. All right, well, we got the trim on both of these, and I'm liking the way they're turning out. Uh, this one, the spot I have planned for it on the layout is uh, going to be pretty visible. So I um, decided I'm going to add an occupant. Uh, this uh, <laughs> fine fellow is uh, from Rail King, I believe, O-scale figure. And I just uh, I just repainted him and he's catching up on the news while he uh, does his business. And I'm going to glue him in there right now, I think. A little bit of Eileen's tacky glue, if I can find that. Put a little bit on his bum here. And a little bit on the bottom of his shoes. I had to add a little um, step uh, in here uh, for his feet to rest on because these uh, um, stools <laughs> are a little high. Okay. Now, don't ask me why the door is open while he's in here. It's uh, 
Uh, apparently he likes a nice breeze while he's doing his business. To each his own. And now I can start putting these roof panels on. Just a little dab of glue here on the tabs and slots. And I already dry fit this. And it's such a nice tight fit, I could almost do it without the glue. way down there on the tabs. Now the kit comes with enough uh, of these Wild West uh, printed paper shingles to do both of the outhouses and they've thoughtfully included uh, two different colors, kind of a weathered gray and a weathered brown. But I'm not going to use those. Um, <laughs> I happen to have some um, leftover uh, cedar, peel and stick cedar shingles from an earlier project. So this one, the kind of uh, barn red colored one, is going to get uh, the cedar shingles. And I think on this one, I'm going to use uh, do tar paper roofing on that. There are no scribed shingle lines on these roofs, so I'm just going to have to uh, wing it. Just eyeball it the best that I can. All right, pretty happy with the way the roof turned out on that one. Very nice. Now for this one, I'm going to do tar paper. Like I said, I'm going to use some black construction paper for that. Uh, I'm going to cut this into scale two foot wide strips. Usually roofing paper would be uh, two or three foot wide on rolls. Uh, two foot wide is going to look a little bit better on this roof. So a half an inch. Give us a scale two feet in O scale. I'm going to put these on with some just some diluted yellow glue. Give this one a little character. Rip it. Take one of the corners off. Sometimes I'll just take my fingernail and scrunch that up a little bit just to give it a little bit of character. We got ourselves a roof. I just want to add a little bit of weathering, especially to the roofs with, some, with my colored chalks. It's mixing up kind of a warm gray. Okay. A little bit on this roof too. The shingles look pretty new. That's better. Now I'm just going to finish both of these off with a light coat of some matte fixative. Um, that'll help uh, lock those chocks in place. It'll also help to keep this uh, construction paper from fading in the UV light, which it tends to do. That's all you need. Now this next uh, detail is a little disgusting, but I'm going to do it. Just to add a little bit more realism to the outhouse. Here around the seat, I mean, this is wood. And um, not everybody's aim is perfect, so I'm going to have a little bit of a stain running down the front here. 
few spots on the floor. I'm just using some watercolors. One of my favorite weathering mediums. I use uh, burnt sienna and cobalt blue mixed together to make a kind of a, a warm gray. A little up here on the seat. All right, that's probably good. <laughs> Don't want to overdo it. I <laughs> also like to use my watercolors to add a little bit more subtle weathering on these uh, tar paper roofs like this. Just kind of going in along the seams. And then you kind of just streak that down. And here in places where the, the tar paper is torn away, show it darker underneath. Some spots and imperfections and what have you. And with that, I think my Wild West Scale Models outhouses are finished. Now I just need to find a couple of good spots for them over on the layout. One place on the layout that definitely needs an outhouse is over here at Circle D Ranch. And I'll just put that right there for now between the barn and the horse corral matches rather nicely. Over here at Saguaro Siding is a scene I've left pretty much untouched for the past several years. I think it could definitely benefit from an outhouse. And I didn't really plan it this way, but the fella on the john in there kind of helps complete the story of why that crate is just hanging there. Guess he's taking a break. And to sum everything up, all I can say is don't forget those outhouses and the other small details like this. This was a relatively quick and simple project, but it adds a ton of lived in realistic detail to both of these scenes. I want to thank you all for watching this entire video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see more. You can also follow Thunder Mesa on Instagram at thunder.mesa or find out what is new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. And if you really like what we're doing here on the channel and want to show your support, you can do what these nice folks did and head on over to patreon.com slash thundermesa and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, amigos. Adios for now.